All right, hello everyone. The time is, boy, what time is it? 17.02, New York local time. We are looking at two products right now. We're going to do a long-term analysis of uh, the ES and the NQ. Okay, so we're going to start with a monthly chart of the ES. We're going to get right into it. Um, usually I would like the runtime of these videos to be above 10 minutes. There's some YouTube algorithm stuff for that. Um, I wanted to mention to you, uh, I'm sure that most of you have already clicked off the video, knowing your attention span. Watch the whole video. Come on. I'll get to the good stuff. Give me 20 seconds. Um, I need to get the watch time of this video up in order to earn, uh, or earn monetization on YouTube. And so I would ask kindly that you, uh, even if you're not going to watch the full length recordings, please leave them running in the background in a separate tab. I need to get the watch time up. I'll probably make a sep separate video asking for that. Okay, ES monthly. We are coming up to this large monthly green candle here in the September contract. We're coming into a, a premium relative to that. Um, I would say uh, from a long time back, we've got a inefficiency here, and that would the midway point of that would take us to 4506. Three quarters of this bissy from many many moons ago be 4523 so the best I can tell you on the ES is that we're probably looking at 4506 uh, three quarters to the upside and we're probably looking at 4523 uh, evens as well weekly chart um, many of you that are ICT traders you are already aware of this volume imbalance um, the midpoint of that is going to come in at 45.37 evens, three quarters up. A deep premium would come in at 45.55, three quarters. Do I think that we get there on a holiday week? Maybe. Maybe. Um, so that's our kind of bullish scenario here on the ES. Bullish scenario is the ES continues to trade higher into our weekly volume imbalance. Consequent encroachment of that or the midpoint of this volume imbalance inefficiency on the left would be 45.37 evens. That would take us into the equilibrium of this volume imbalance, this inefficiency. If we were to trade into a premium, meaning higher than the equilibrium of this volume imbalance, I would first look at the three quarters, and that would be 45.55 three quarters. Okay. Do we get there next week, week of July 4th? Maybe. You know, I'm kind of doubtful. Uh, downside targets for the ES. I don't see a whole lot of argument for the downside. I don't favor the downside as this right here would mean an immediate rebalance. So we see that we were going to have, we did have a small bissy here. We had a bissy that was immediately traded back and covered. So to me, that would be a sign that, that the powers that be want to take us higher. Um, they probably want to take us higher on the ES. And I would be looking at this volume imbalance. I'd be looking at 45.37. 45.55.75. Yeah, you know, if we are looking to trade back down next week, maybe come and reclaim this BISI, okay? First downside target would just be the high of this little candle here, 43.69 halves. That would reclaim this BISI. That's a possibility. Second downside target would be this BISI here. Midpoint of that would come in at about 42.85 halves. I favor the upside pretty strongly on the ES at this point. That being said, if we are going to have a consolidation week, if we are going to come back down, first target would be the exact same BISI that we just bounced out off of, and that would be a reclaimed BISI. Okay, reclaimed BISI. If we, if we get a, a black candle, you know, I'm thinking target's going to be the, that high there, 43.69 halves. That's kind of my bear scenario. Is it likely that we do that? I don't think so, but it is possible. And so you need to be aware of your bullish and bearish scenarios, as I have been preaching on this channel now for quite some time. Um, you cannot get so wedded to one inefficiency or one idea that you're not seeing the other side. Okay, These markets move in two directions, and you need to have a two-directional scenario. So I am not Nostradamus. I cannot predict the future. I can tell you that I'm strongly favoring the upside on the ES, but if there's a first downside target, it would be this exact same BISI that we just delivered. So come in, re-deliver it, reclaim it. That high would be there at 43.69.50. So that would be our downside target. That being said, I think about 70% of the time we're coming up, and we're coming up to 40, 45.37 evens. 
if we have a particularly bullish week, 45, 55, three quarters. If we have just an enormous, you know, pump, right? We're looking at a really bullish week, maybe all the way up to the low of this candle, and that would be 45, 66, three quarters. So that would be up here, okay? Do I see that happening? Not really. Uh, let's see if we have some advanced gap theory concepts that maybe give us a standard deviation projection here on the weekly time frame. Okay, if we, this is kind of tough to say. We call that our mm, breakaway gap. All of these have been re-delivered. They wouldn't really make good breakaway gaps. Let's go to the daily chart, see if we have a breakaway gap and a measuring gap. Let's apply that model. Okay, breakaway there. Let's say that's going to be a breakaway chart of breakaway inefficiencies. We did not re-deliver it. Let's see if we can see another inefficiency which we did not re-deliver. Okay, that would be here. Okay, didn't re did not re-deliver that. Let's take a standard deviation projection of that. Uh, I have not used this concept here on a daily time frame, but assuming you know that everything works the same. Okay, let's just take it from the low. That upside target would take us all the way up. So let's see here. Yeah, every everything, you know, advanced gap theory, volume imbalance up here. What, what, what did I just do there? I took a standard deviation projection from a daily chart. Okay. Assuming that that is the projection that we're looking at. Uh, yeah, it kind of confirms the length of this box right here's the reserve box about the 61 percent let's say that's an optimal trade entry 0.065 let's see that yeah okay optimal trade entry comes in at 45 40 evens so advanced gap theory a full standard deviation up higher would be way up here at 47 10 halves i'm obviously not calling for that uh, but an optimal trade entry or a uh, zero spot six zero five retracement on the ES that takes us to forty five forty evens. That confirms our volume imbalance. So two models are telling you the same thing. Advanced gap theory and volume imbalance are both pointing to about that forty five forty evens. So advanced gap theory model takes you there. Optimal trade entry takes you there. Uh, just a standard sort of volume imbalance consequent encroachment takes you there. I have a lot of reason to believe that the ES wants to to tag forty five. 40 evens. But as we've, as we've talked about before, that same BISI that we just re-delivered, that immediate rebalance, we could come back there. Okay, let's talk about the NQ. Um, we really don't have a lot to work with here on the September contract. Uh, I'm first going to get the bearish target out of the way. Uh, bearish target would be, again, to come down, start, start with a bearish scenario. If we come down here, where we just made our immediate rebalance, we come back down to the same inefficiency and we consolidate for this week of July 4th. I would say that our downside target would be 14,869 spot 50. Okay. All right. So that it would be my downside target, you know, very short and sweet to the point. If we get a consolidation week, that's kind of where I'd be looking at, or even the low of this candle, 964 evens. Again, that's 964 evens. That would be a downside target. Midway point of that would come in at 9.15 evens. Let's get to the bull side target and let's use our daily um, advanced gap theory. So assuming, let's see here. Assuming that this volume imbalance is our breakaway, okay? And this is our measuring. We'll measure from this one because this one is still open. Let's take it from there to there, and let's start cloning boxes. Okay, take it from the high of that. That's one standard deviation we got there. Let's take another clone. Let's get up to two standard deviations and show you where that takes us. Okay, two standard deviations on the NASDAQ would take us up to 15,813 three quarters. Seems like a very reasonable upside target to me. Okay, using this as a measuring gap and using our standard deviations. About halfway or three quarters of the way there, you're looking at 15,656 evens. That also seems pretty reasonable to me, 61% retracement. If it's going a full st two standard deviations, then we're looking at uh, 813 spot 75. I think that's a pretty reasonable, doable target. 
Uh, but certainly, okay, certainly NASDAQ looking at an optimal trade entry coming up to 552 evens. That seems pretty reasonable. NASDAQ usually likes to go into a deep premium, especially recently when we are in an up cycle. So I would say I'd be looking at 648 evens using our advanced gap theory. I have a video on that. Go watch it. Um, so spot 605, that's our optimal trade entry. That would put us at 15,552 evens. That seems very reasonable to me. Deep premium, 648 evens. That seems pretty reasonable to me. Two full standard deviations, 813 three quarters. I personally am not calling on two full standard deviations. I think that the NASDAQ is going to turn around and begin a consolidation or a bear cycle somewhere between 552 evens and 648 evens. So I think, I think we're nearing the end of the bull cycle on the NASDAQ. I think it's going to come in the month of July. Um, we have contract month inefficiencies lower. I think that Q4 uh, is looking down for the NASDAQ. Uh, it's also looking down for the ES. So at this point, I think uh, the bull cycle here on the NASDAQ, we're just about at the end of it. Maybe another you know two to 300 points, up to 500 points higher. At that point, I do think we begin consolidating, we begin shopping, and then eventually we come lower. So... Uh, at this point, I think the bull cycle here on the NASDAQ is coming to a close. It's probably going to close in Q4. We begin our bear cycle here on the NASDAQ, probably Q4. Um, not a lot of reason for, for me to believe immediately here that the NASDAQ is going to turn back around. Um, I am firmly leaning bullish up to at least 15,552 evens. Uh, after that, we will reassess. Uh, that has been ad an advanced gap theory standard deviation projection here in the daily chart on the NASDAQ. Um, God bless and good trading. I'll be back with more.